Well, the scripture today is from Numbers, chapter 6. It's the fourth book in the Bible, and we're going to read the last paragraph in that chapter. It starts at verse 22. Numbers 6, verse 22. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. I was a rookie pastor in rural Saskatchewan. And at the end of the worship service one Sunday, I raised my hand to give a benediction. And just before I had a word to sit, before I had a chance to say a word, a little boy in the back row, standing on the pew between his parents, a little boy in the back row waved back and said, Bye. <laughs> and that little boy was right. A benediction, a blessing, is kind of like a goodbye. We often say them at the end of the service. The people of God have been doing that for 3,000 years. But we also give a blessing often at the end of a letter, maybe at the end of an email. Maybe more significantly, when we're at the airport saying goodbye or at the university residence in some place we had never dreamed we would be, we say a concentrated summary of what's most important to us. And we wish people the best, all God's best. This morning, Jason and Candace, Gabe and Addie Rempel, there I did it again, <laughs> are moving on, and we want to say some important last words. So how about these? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Those words seem to me to fit because we want God the Lord, who is the source of every good gift, to bless you in very practical ways, with good health and life-giving relationships, with satisfying work and sufficient income, with happy family time and dependable child care, and so, so much more. When we say blessing, we're not being vague and ambiguous. We're not being religious in an icky way. After five years of sharing life and ministry together here at, at West End, you matter to us, and we want God to bless you. Specifically, we want God to keep you. We believe that our help comes from the Lord and that he will watch over your life and ours, as Psalm 121 says. The Lord bless you and keep you. I think there's a, an overtone there of protection, for sure, and in a dangerous world when you never know what's going to happen when you take that step off the curb into the traffic. In this dangerous world where there are all kinds of temptations and troubles, we do pray that for each other, for you. We pray that God would keep you and protect you. We're counting on the fact as the New Testament says, that Christians are shielded by God's power until our salvation is all worked out. And we'd like the Lord to make his face shine on you. There's a moment just after children disobey or mess up when they look at their parents to read their faces. Is it scowling or angry or even worse? Or is that face perhaps merciful and gracious? 
And we're asking God to smile on you, to assure you of his love and mercy. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the radiance of God's glory. And if there's one thing Jesus is about, it's to say that God is for us. We believe that, that God will do that kind of protecting and saving and, because that's what God is in it for. Because God is a God who saves. God is one who holds us fast. God is one who cares for our best interests. God who is one who wants to bless us and give us the very best. And so Candace and Jason... May the Lord be gracious to you. That's the next word in this text. Maybe it's the central word, too, in this text. May the Lord be gracious to you. The, the, the whole essence of what God is about is grace, of, is generosity, is overcoming our resistance and trouble and sin and all the rest. And giving us much better than we deserve, surprising us when things turn out better than we expected. The same God who blessed the Israelites through the wilderness, they were just setting out on the journey to a promised land. And the same God who blessed them blesses us. Moses, you might remember, experienced the brightness of God's presence. And he reported to the people that the Lord was the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love. Maybe you remember that situation at the bottom of the mountain where it was all fierce and judgmental. It was awesome and fiery and everybody shrunk back and didn't want to go near. And God asked Moses to come closer and courageously he did. And he discovered, as God said, as they met face to face and Moses' face shone with the brightness of the glory of God, they discovered, as Moses said, as he just came back from the mountain, from that meeting with the Lord, that God was the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love. And that kind of grace... That kind of overwhelming mercy and, and, and generosity and just fill in the blank with all the specific important things. That's kind, that kind of graciousness is what we're praying for you, that you'll experience that God would be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The only bit that's repeated here is about turning his face toward you. That was in the line before. Well, that and the fact that the Lord is mentioned three times in each part of, the, of this blessing. And I suspect that that's because God wants us to think about that a little more, about how God turns his face toward us. Five centuries ago, ago the great English poet John Donne used the same metaphor. Uh, the words may be a bit antique, but for that matter, so is the book of Numbers. The poet is speaking to the Lord Jesus in prayer. Here's what he says. Though thou with clouds of anger do disguise thy face, yet through that mask I know those eyes, which though they turn away sometimes, they never will despise. We know those eyes. We've seen them in the face of Jesus Christ. We've believed them for a long time, many of us. And we know that Christ will never despise his little ones who trust in him. We know that, that God looks on us, that Christ looks on us with a, a constancy and a, and a faithfulness that will never, never fail. And so the Lord bless you and give you peace, finally. God's wonderful shalom includes lots of things. It's one of the richest, it's probably the basic Old Testament word for God's 
kindness to us. That's why the New Testament writers often say grace and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Because peace wraps, because grace is the word that, that the New Testament sings so often in relation to Jesus. And peace is the word that the Old Testament uses to summarize the, the completeness of God's blessings. And God's wonderful peace, his wonderful shalom, includes a variety of things, including the absence of hostilities. That's important. We've paid for that, or we've prayed already for that kind of protection and, and providence. But that peace goes way beyond that to encompass personal well-being, good health, family harmony, and final salvation. It's about an integrated, whole, full life. A few years ago, archaeologists were working at a burial site near Jerusalem, and they discovered two pieces of women's jewelry, and I brought them with, no, <laughs> to give as a gift, no, <laughs> no. Um, silver jewelry dating from about 600 years before Christ. These 2,600-year-old silver cylinders had words on them that echo the same words that we've been paying attention to in Numbers chapter 6. That priestly blessing, Aaron's benediction. They're the oldest words of Scripture in existence right now or at least the ones we found. And just as surely as those Hebrew words of blessing were carved into that ancient silver. Jason and Candace, your influence here has been engraved on our hearts. And so we pray a mighty blessing for you of protection and well-being, grace and peace, that's what we desire for ourselves, too. That's what we want for the needy world around us. And that's our prayer for you today. Amen.